Chantal Aubry and I have developed this model where instead of trying to forecast what's going to happen, we look at scenarios and different possibilities for the future. But what we've really added is the flags which would indicate that you're moving into a particular scenario and then based on whether the flags are up or down we assign a subjective probability to the scenario. So using this particular technique what are we saying to our South African clients at the moment? Well the first scenario we offer them is called Premier League. It's where we stay in the Premier League of Nations which is the top 59 nations which are annually ranked in a survey that comes out of Switzerland called the World Competitiveness Yearbook. Uh, this year we rank 50 out of 59. We should be number 32 because we are the 32nd largest economy in the world. But the reason that we're 18 places below uh, that is that the people who rank us say that foreign investment is being deterred by policy uncertainty in South Africa. And unfortunately the incident at Marikana has done nothing to remove that uncertainty. So Chantal and I say we're in the relegation zone of the Premier League and there are really three scenarios. We, we get our act together um, and get back into the middle of the Premier League where we rightfully belong. Uh, we're the only African nation listed in the Premier League at the moment. The second is we have a peaceful decline into a scenario called Second Division where we join the bulk of the Third World, poor but peaceful, and Nigeria, for example, could overtake us to become Africa's premier economy because Nigeria is growing at 7%, we're growing at uh, 3 So there's a differential of 4 and Nigeria is already two-thirds the size of the South African economy. And yeah, it'll be much more difficult to, to uh, raise money abroad. And for the government, faced with 500 billion rand for the next generation of power stations and 750 billion rand, for sustaining our water supplies over the next 50 years. It poses huge problems, that scenario, and Pravin Gordon will get less tax in the second division than he will in the Premier League. So it's a, it's a very nasty scenario for the government, second division, despite a peaceful decline. If the flag of violence goes up, then we move into a scenario called failed state. It's where people collectively turn their back on you because you're too anarchic, uh, you're too violent. I mean, Afghanistan would qualify as a failed state, so would Somalia, Iraq, uh, sadly Syria um, at the moment. Now, obviously, the level of violence here is nothing like it is in, in those countries, but we have up the probability of this scenario uh, because we have four red flags and one tendency, which is a long-term red flag. The first red flag is nationalisation. Uh, we think that the government has actually moved away from that topic, uh, so that flag is down at the moment. The second flag is a clumsy implementation of national health insurance, which leads to a decline in private medical care. Again, we believe that flag is down because the Minister of Health is um, you know, conscious of this and discussing with uh, private sector players how to implement NHI in a way that does not disrupt uh, the private sector. The third flag is why we now give uh, the first 10% to a failed state scenario, which is a media tribunal with punitive powers, which we feel would remove an absolutely vital pillar of a modern democracy, which is an independent media, and would cause a huge outbreak in corruption. And as soon as the secrecy bill was tabled, we jumped the probability from 0% on the scenario to 10 And yes, they've watered down the, uh, the tribunal, it's now a commission, and removed some of the really offensive clauses, but it's still a very worrying bill, and that's why we still keep the 10% on the scenario. The last red flag that uh, Chantal Ilbri and I have is land grabs. It's the most toxic one of all. Uh, we actually did a session um, in January 2008 with ZANU PF. Um, we had representatives down here and we had a two-day session. And they pointed out that the land invasions in the late uh, 90s actually stopped them in their tracks. They had an economy growing at 7 to 8 percent per annum, fastest growing economy in the SADC region. The land invasions, they hit the wall. And of course that would happen here in South Africa if, it ha if, if we have uh, a similar event. Obviously one of the points of 
talking of a red flag is to try and keep it down. So we are promoting the idea of an agrodesa, which is an agricultural equivalent to a codesa, where you bring the large commercial farmers together with the small farmers, together with AgriSA, the government and the land bank, to negotiate a reasonable program of transforming land ownership. But that flags down because we simply haven't had the, the uh, land invasions yet. The tendency, which is a long-term flag, comes out of two discussions I had with Western embassies earlier this year, where I asked them, did you foresee the Arab Spring? They both said no, so I said, what were the flags you missed? And they said, abnormally high youth unemployment in all the countries affected by the Spring, combined with active social networks, combined with growing alienation by young people for the state. And we have all three in South Africa, despite being a democracy here, we have that kind of sense of alienation. Um, you can have types of Arab Spring outside a dictatorship. It happened in London, crazy two days, uh, when there was mayhem in London, buildings got burnt down, shops got looted. In Greece right now, uh, you, you have serious violence uh, going on at the moment. And here in South Africa, we feel that the random event that triggers such a spring could have been Marikana. So we have now upped the failed state probability to 25%, which has moved it from a wild card scenario to something which really should be on the radar system. The other two scenarios, Premier League, second division, we have three flags that we watch to decide whether we're going back into the middle of the Premier League or down into the second division. Inclusive leadership, uh, we looked at countries that have done well in the Premier League and they have leaders which bring the nation together. Singapore probably being the best example. Lee Kuan Yew took it from a, a, almost a failed state after the Second World War. He imposed law and order, emphasis on education. They're number three this year in the Premier League. Nelson Mandela was an inclusive leader, but I'm afraid to say his two successors haven't uh, come close to, 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 to him. And we need that inclusivity of leadership because we won't stay in the Premier League. It's just like soccer. <laughs> you know, Manchester United is united because Alex Ferguson is, is such a good manager. The second flag around um, whether we move up or down is pockets of excellence. This is what gives me great hope. This country has fantastic pockets of excellence in virtually any sphere you care to name. If we use those pockets of excellence to raise the performance, Good flag. If we dumb down our pockets of excellence, terrible flag. 28,000 schools in this country, 5,000 reasonable to excellence, 23,000 dysfunctional to shocking. How are we going to use the good schools to raise the performance of the bad schools? And the third flag is around a balanced economy, an outward economy that earns us foreign exchange to pay for our imports, an inward economy that creates jobs. As far as the outward economy is concerned, we have to play to spaces we can dominate, which is resources, but we have to get our act together again in the mining industry. Tourism, we're a cheap destination, and the recent tourism figures were great. Uh, and thirdly, being the gateway into Africa in the sense that companies think that we are the best place to start chasing the, the other markets in Africa because we have the best stock exchange, the best banks. On the inward economy, the flag is entrepreneurship small business and our attitude to small business. And yeah, we, we've, we've always said that Jacob Zuma, instead of talking about creating five million jobs, should talk about creating one million new businesses. Because that is the only way you're going to create uh, five million new jobs. At the moment, we give a 50% probability to staying in the Premier League. We give a 25% probability to dropping into the second division. If you combine the two 25s, we're now 50-50, which is a second tipping point. We were at a tipping point in the early 90s when we could have tipped into civil war. We didn't. We had Cadessa 1 and 2 uh, to negotiate a new constitution. We now need an economic Cadessa to negotiate a proper inclusive economy where you get government, captains of industry, the unions, um, and entrepreneurs to negotiate a proper blueprint for this economy. And we can use the National Planning Commission uh, report as the agenda.